Once again, one and all, Mademoiselle and the other guys. From Uptown, Uptown Burbank, the beautiful part of Uptown Burbank, Harmontown is now in session. <laughs> Won't you please join me in welcoming the game master of your dreams, Spencer Crittenden. And the fuzziest mayor of all time. You love him, Dan Harmon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's let's bring this uh, town hall meeting to order. That was that's the that's the conceit of the show. First order of business. Uh, when do we get into the moon? Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember that premise that never. Never yeah. came to fruition. Well, you mean we? Yeah, we didn't build a rocket ship. Is that what's? I don't know. I feel like it, now isn't that more important than ever to get the hell off of this horrible planet that wants to kill us? Yeah, I, I yeah I. But in order to do it, we'd have to work with hundreds of people that I now don't like. <laughs> Like I, it's a, I think we missed our deadline. I think this, it's like the Tower of Babel. Like I, humanity's been disbanded. Uh, I just, I'm a, I'm a, a lone wolf now. I'm like that wolf that Tom Cruise saw in that movie. <laughs> lone wolf. Uh, it, the movie was not called. What was your guess? The lone, lone wolf. wolf. No, no. <laughs> that would be great. Was it called Wolf? No. No, Wolf of Wall Street. Nope. These are all famous movies that are famous for not starring Tom Cruise. <laughs> Except for Spencer's Guess, which is a non-existent movie. That, that, was, that would be the movie you'd expect him to see a lone wolf in when he's a lone wolf. Would it, though? Well, was yeah. it? Was it? You, that, you, that happens, and then it's like, lone wolf, and then the credits roll. It's then, like a three-minute movie. I know, I, know, why, I know what it is. I know what it is. It was Wolfie McGuire. <laughs> Why wouldn't The Breakfast Club be about a sandwich with egg on it? <laughs> it and, but it should be uh, three and layers. Or why wouldn't the title be uh, A Guy Falls Through a Ceiling uh, at, while trying to go get his weed from his locker? That would be a terrible title for Breakfast Club, but... A, a great title for Weed Locker. <laughs> uh, weed Locker is... Uh, yeah. That's the, but that was about the Iraq War, I think, right? <laughs> That's the that's uh, uh, Doug Benson's uh, indie comedy movie. Uh, that's where he, sh he shoots it in the in the in the Angeles desert. Is there an Angeles desert? There's a forest. Okay, but next to it, is there any sand? Yeah, you go you go inland a couple miles. Okay, and the trees run out, and there's no ocean. And yeah, now okay. you're now and you're in Angeles desert. Now you're talking Angeles yeah. desert. <laughs> or, or you just hit like. I don't know, I, I, Nevada. I, I, yeah, I know. I think it, but I, I, maybe I should have said Nevada. But it's like it's like a it's like a one million dollar comedy, you know. Like they got some investors, but it's like they're pretending they're, that it's about Doug Benson being in Iraq, and it's called the Weed Locker. <laughs> Just wanted to finish my pitch. <laughs> Although I agree with you, the movie sells itself. Uh, oh, what what is the Tom Cruise movie you're talking about? Oh, you see him? He's a gray-haired hitman in the back of a Wayans Brothers. Uh, no, no, it was a what? <laughs> Racist, racist. Wait, who was it? Who's dr Jamie Fox? Jamie Fox? Wait, what? Jamie Collateral. Jamie Collateral. Oh, cl I, I thought you were telling me his name. I was like, I'm not that off. I know it's a, that that person's name. I do not know. It's a, he, that person sounds like he won an Oscar. Hawaterwa. And the winner is Hawaterwa. Hawaterwa is winning his first Oscar and will soon be a cab driver. Well, take it up with white society, you pricks. Don't look at me. It's, I'm not the fucking one that's the cause of this. That poor guy in the, what's that movie called? Captain, my captain. I'm the captain now. Dead Poet Society? 
that's, that's the only old captain. My Why captain was it movie. Dead Poets Society called I'm the, ca- I'm the Captain now, Captain? Des- desk Standers with an exclamation point. I, fa- I found my, look what I found. Oh, a lot of you, a lot of you plebes don't know what these are. Because, oh, I, I meant to bring you, you mine, I forgot. You don't I don't ear pods, my ear pods. Uh, these guys are going to be gone in like, like 48 hours. No way, man. I'm never going to, never going to lose you babies I, again. I don't, I, where'd you even find those anyway? He put them in, like he, he's dancing like he's already playing music in them. And he's, I know that that's not how it works. I'm dancing, I'm dancing like Brad Pitt in, um, in Fight Club when he's... <laughs> When he runs around the corner with, um, what's your name, uh, Tim Burton's wife? <laughs> Sorry, ladies. <laughs> Nothing she does can unobjectify her. She's still just some guy's wife. <laughs> Helena Bottom Carter. Uh, and and, and uh, he drags her around the corner, and then he, and then he just starts go, going like this, cause, like, like as the cops run by, because if you're dancing in a junkie hallway... You know, this is you're, the only you're not time who they're looking for. This is, the, this is the only time I would say it was better to not pay the $5 a month for the uh, live streams so they, they didn't have to see that dance. They might have saved themselves the trouble on that one. Uh, to answer your question, Spencer, you found them in your oh, car. Oh, what? Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Why didn't I know that? <sighs> so I, I was... I was uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I was, I was uh, 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 in the. Uh, it's not. It's not a hospital. It's a surgery center. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to see if I can take care of that. Uh, they put a camera down my throat again. Because here's the thing. Okay, this is a little crazy. Like you know, I, I have uh, chronic heartburn. I, I can't imagine why. <laughs> I keep searching and searching for a way to, to <laughs> mitigate the burning pain in my esophagus. Excuse me for that. Um, the first time I went, they looked down my, my cake tunnel and, uh, and they found some polyps and they, 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 they grabbed them and to send them off to a lab to see if they were cancer polyps. And, um, and they said like, oh, your digestive system looks great. And, uh, like, uh, I can't, what the fuck were they looking for that time? Because then the, se- I'm getting so upset just thinking about it. Cause I went, I, was, I told you last time, I was a little upset in the last episode. You might have noticed a tonal shift here. I'm a little calmer now. <laughs> are, are, are you, are, are, you were on like some pretty heavy-duty painkillers they give you for that. Are, are you still floating on those, or is, is that I don't over? feel like it, but they tell you don't make any business decisions today, no matter... <laughs> that's what they say, which is kind of delightful. Just, I, was, just, I was like, I just, cancel my calls, just, uh, I, Smithers. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't. Don't call North Korea right. until tomorrow. Like, yeah. I, like, yeah, don't address any Boy Scouts, for God's sake. Uh, <laughs> uh, you might not be in a proper frame of mind to hold the s- stitching of society together. Mind your P's and Q's, sir. Don't, uh, don't, don't go off on a psychotropic substance stumbling into society. You might end up elected president! All right. <sighs> Don't have half a brain when you just run out into the street shouting whatever you're feeling. Uh, you'll get rewarded for it endlessly and then die while killing everyone. You wouldn't want that, Mr. Harmon. Goodbye. Want some Cheez-Its? They gave, they gave me Cheez-Its. This is, the, the, this is the one thing. is like after you wake up, you're like super high. Like it's great. It's like, like they... It's kind of an intimidating thing to be rolled into a room where, where you know, it's a, you know, they don't they don't design surgery rooms to be like you know they wouldn't want like fluffy pillows in there and stuff with hair on them like the comfort comfort goes hand in hand with non sterility like, you know you wouldn't want like yeah. bean bags in your in your room or like oil paintings and the oil's gonna get in your body and they, so it's like a grody creepy uh, jigsaw room like 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 and. Uh, but clean, uh, uh, but, but still like sociopathic, and you, there's beeping, and you can hear your heart beeping, and then you, when you hear your heart beeping, it starts beeping faster, and and then you try to experiment with lowering it because you think you're gonna blow their mind and go like, who are you? <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> you feel like like I'm just seeing an eagle in the sky, and, um, and then they, but then they then they like they start this fucking thing through the IV and they just like they, this time they didn't even say countdown from ten to one like they were just like they they just didn't even give a fuck and I was like and it was just boom you're out 
And and like you're instantly awake. Nothing happens. You don't. It's not like being asleep where you have like this weird consciousness of time. It's like fucking. It's like a cut, and then you're in a different room, and no one else is there because they left your ass because you, <laughs> because you're boring because you have been knocked out. Like it's a, you feel abandoned because you're like wait everybody left, but it's like no, we were all here with you. We rolled you like the furniture you are into a corner after we <laughs> cut some polyps out of your stomach. Fucking chill out. When you start babbling like a maniac, we'll come back and give you cheez its. Um, <laughs> Why, why, why is Cheez-Its the go-to I don't snack? know, but when, why do they follow the bag of Cheez-Its with a lecture about why you're fat? Like, that's the thing. Oh. Like, I kept, I never said the phrase, you guys gave me the Cheez-Its so many times today. <laughs> because they kept coming in. And they're like, you want, you want some Cheez-Its? I'm like, yes. Uh, 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 did I, am I in heaven? And, I, I, and, then I, and then I'm eating the cheese. It's like, okay, the doctor will be right in. And then so another person comes in and goes like, Mr. Harmon, uh, listen, you know, we didn't find anything in there that's not the result of like, you know, a guy your age uh, 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 having gained your, your amount of weight. You guys gave me the cheese. <laughs> No, I know, sir. I just sang. Like, <laughs> it just kept happening. Like different did people they give kept you, like, coming in. Did they give you like the airport size bag of those, or like like a big? Just a little baby bag. Yeah. I was just like, like, look. I just kind of felt like maybe if I wasn't eating Cheez Its with crumbs all over my face, <laughs> that maybe they would have laid off the fat lectures a little bit. <laughs> Because at least, I'm not saying I would have looked thinner with now out oh, cheese it's in my hand, but, but maybe they would have thought, like, well, he must not know that he's fat. <laughs> like, for all we know, he started his diet yesterday. Let's not fuck with him too much. I would say, like, but they were like, dude, you're fat. I'm like, you gave me cheese it's. Yeah, maybe trail mix, maybe something not so, so like, fatty, like a cholesterol. Yeah. Well, like... now that you're pe- pitching that, I'm like, fuck, no. That would be, <laughs> yeah, that would be awful. That would be awful. Yeah, I mean, but you would feel that you would feel like you were in a hospital, not not with trail like, mix. <laughs> what, would, what would be a good hospital? Like I don't know, it'd be like a RoboCop paste, you know? They'd be yeah, like it's applesauce. Yeah, applesauce. Would you, like a, it would be like in one of those uh, paper containers that when you finish, you can unfold it and turn it into a yamaka. But there, but there must be some sort of like scientific reason, like is it because the salts, the fats, like the things like that you were depleted. Yeah, I'm sure they like. Yeah, it's, I'm sure they've, or they. Or, che- or just. Or big, it's just big cheese. Big cheese. It's <laughs> fucking involved. Yeah, they got yeah, this, they got they got like uh, defibrillators with the cheese it brand defibrillators. Yeah. Their their stationery is like cheese it yeah. stationery. They're like, what's going on and here? You, and, and and you leave your hospital. You called not a hospital, and you realize that you you were just at Nabisco the whole time. Do <laughs> you look back in there because you. Hear, you hear a, you hear one squeaky hinge and you look back and the stage hands are hoisting the flat it's like, it's like God, it's in a giant box of crackers I was in the Keebler elf tree and they were, and they were all on stilts I, I told you I, I went under general anesthesia once for my wisdom teeth and I woke up and something horrible had happened like <laughs> th- there was a footprint on my chest and my belt was off I've been under. And the three doctor times. wasn't there, and I asked the woman, like the nurse, I was like, "Where, where is the doctor?" He's like, oh. "Yeah, yeah, he he left." <laughs> I'm like He's... when? When? It's like a couple hours ago. I'm like, "What's up? Like, was did everything? Was, did did every, all my teeth come out? Okay." He's like, "It, it was a struggle. <laughs> my belt, my belt was off. Huh? I went to sleep with my belt on. I tell you, fucking for sure." And then she showed me my teeth in a cup, and it looked like they had gone hammer and chisel on those motherfuckers. Because they had. And then I go home, and my friend drove me home, because you have to have somebody to drive you home, because you're, you know, you're high as a kite. And I go to the... Uh, I, I, get, I go home, I have to get my, um, my prescription card. To, have, I, have I told this story before on the show? I, feel like I, I can't remember. Yeah. That's what we, have we, I? We've, we've both gotten I have. this point. Early on? Early on? What did you think, though? It's kind of like Gremlins 2. You want to see it again. <laughs> you're not sure. You, you, you're like, hey, was that, wasn't there like a, like a, a tranny, trans no. gremlin the, in, the, in that movie that like transitioned and like was like kissing other gremlins? I can't remember. I think we need to watch it again. I, I think the, the, only, the only funny part for me was that I, I went to go get my insurance, like my prescription card, and then while I was up there, I was so high, I thought, oh, I'm going to take some trash out. So I, I threw my prescription card out with the oh, trash. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that is funny. It's the funny. And then I get to the place, and now the pain the painkillers are wearing off. I'm dying. We had to go figure out where my thing was, and I, I, I was 
just now not high enough to remember to dig through my trash and find the fucking thing. Yeah, that's why they wouldn't let me take an Uber from the, from the place. Also, they said it's sexist and that you should take a lift, but... <laughs> Uh, they wouldn't let me take an Uber because they, they're, they're, uh, they're, and they were like, oh, well, you have to be like a limo service that we have a relationship with. And uh, I'm like, okay, the cheese it, uh, transit company, maybe? <laughs> yes. Cheese your, wheels? Your, your car is cheese like a... <laughs> fucking cheese. wheels are square. It's yeah. getting gets shitty mileage. It's shaped but, like a Trisket. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the salty, salty rover. They can't... They shouldn't be giving you fucking Cheez-Its after you've had a surgery. That's crazy. Well, look, if the customer's always right, man. I, I'm tell, I think at that point, they're like, we put a camera down your throat, you survive. Eat right. one bag of crackers. Did you get to see the camera? Do you get to look at the apparatus before it goes down your gullet? They don't show you the... I didn't, I, I'm sure I could have asked. I don't I, think they probably want you to see it, though. Uh, I was, I was, I was, I was kind of like, I could have asked this time because I kind of like, this was like my third time going, you know, I had a, I had a endoscopy and then I had a biopsy for the sarcoid thing. And then I, this was my second time going under in a, like a lightweight, you know, so like, this isn't even like surgery. This is just like a thing. So I was like, I was fucking Bill Murray in that shit. I was like, they're wheeling me in. I'm like, Hey Glenda, how's it going? Still looking good. Uh, <laughs> My name's my name's Diane, and and, uh, and that 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 isn't funny anymore. The, just pointing at women and sexualizing them. That's that was uh, you were a hero in the '80s if you did that. Um, sorry, I'm 44. I, uh, we, I know I've seen your X-rays. The, 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 uh, <laughs> But they, but they like, we, you know, Doctor, 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 what's his fuck? Uh, I, 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 he, he's, like, he's like, hey, Dan, welcome back. I said, it's good to be back. I was like, I was like a real charmer. Yeah. You know, but I got like a hairnet on. I'm laying down. I'm like, it's good to be back. I'm like, this guy thinks he's in some kind of lounge. Yeah, I was cool, man. I wasn't getting a lot of laughs, but I was like funny. I just think doctors, like, I just think I wouldn't want them to be cracking up because then it'd be like, these guys are shakable. Like, I don't want that. They're focused on their craft, but I know I was being funny. I'm sure they have like a, they probably have like an orientation video where they're like, look, some of your patients, you're in Los Angeles, some of your patients are going to be crack ups, you know? Like, they're going to be talented people, like, like crazy geniuses, you know? Some of them are going to have a gift for moving the human heart. Uh, you gotta, like, like, trust me, as much as it seems like they would love for you to break into gales of frivolity, as much as it would be involuntary, truly, um, uh, given, the, given their, their, their hilarity, uh, acumen, um, just sh keep, keep a stiff upper lip. They probably do things like, you know, how, like, uh, soldier guys, like, they, uh... Or soldiers. They, they like, expit... <laughs> They, so why, they like why, to be called yeah, why did I? The only thing I'm like, I, I'm gonna try to make this uh, specific. I'll ju I'll just make them men. Yeah. Um, yes. you, you went way out of your way to make them only I men. Did, did, that was the final result. But that was not the intention. I was trying to. I was. Try, I was like, God, come on, Tom Clancy, do it. <laughs> uh, soldier guys. Now it sounds like you've been in the military. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, also, like, when you said surgery room, infantry, I was, trying, I, think I was searching for infantry and came up with soldier guys. You can't turn soldier into infantry. It's soldier infantry. You'll sound like an idiot. I went soldier guys. I fucking saved it. In their training, one of the things they have to do, or so I've seen in movies, is that they, you know, or, like they, they expose you to tear gas, right? Like, or, you know, whatever you're using on other people. They're like, take off your gas mask. You know, you've seen that scene in the movies and they... You gotta like sit there and take the fucking tear gas. They probably do, they, they have to do that with comedy in the operating room. <laughs> they have to hear all the dumb semi sedated jokes that they're going to hear. Yeah, to... they have to watch like season two of Community. <laughs> I was gonna, you know, when I started that sentence, I was gonna say like uh, the British Office, but then I was like, I think that was one season, and then I was like, do Parks and Rec, and then I was like, fuck it, <laughs> write what you know. I, I stole, I stole the line that Greg Proops uses every time for the last thirty years at his dentist. He's been going to forever, and every time he gets in the chair, every time the dentist asks him, "Are you comfortable?" and Greg always says, "I make a living." <laughs> That's always a goodie. But it's funnier if you're an old Jewish comic. I said, I make a here's a little exchange I had. I'm no Greg Proops, but he said, <laughs> he said, welcome back. I said, it's good to be back. And, uh, and, and he said, how, how are you feeling? And uh, I, said, I said, great, I just had a huge sandwich. And, uh, cause they, you're not supposed to eat for like eight hours. 
because they're going to go in there. And, and, and he's like, oh, thanks for telling us. I said, look, if you found a sandwich in the bathroom, you'd eat it too. <laughs> these, these are good jokes. Yeah. These are good and, jokes. And, and they're stone-faced. And it's not because I'm not funny. It's because they're good why doctors. Don't, Dan, why don't... They want me to stay alive, make more people happy. Why don't we make your next HBO special just you on a gurney? <laughs> <laughs> and you're really letting the, 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 the doctor staff have it. Yeah. You're, you're making light of, of what could potentially be a fatal thing that's going on here. It could. They always have to tell you. They, I got, or they feel like they got to tell you there's like a point zero one chance you'll wake up and choke on the camera and die. Isn't that crazy that they put a camera down your throat and like like it's a but it, like, like like if you were to wake up, it's like it's exactly like Wiley Coyote, like when he runs off the edge of the cliff. As long as he doesn't just fucking stay in the zone, Wiley, like like you could just the time it took for you to mug to the camera, hold up a sign that says "Yikes," you could have made it to the other cliff. You can technically fly. You just have to be less self-aware. Uh, it's like, 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 like if, if, you, if you have a camera down your throat, they can you, 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 they can just churn you like a butter bucket. Churn, churn you like a butter <laughs> <laughs> They can just churn you like the That's... like the fuselage on a butter churn. Uh, but if you were to wake up, simply wake up, you'd be like, <laughs> and you'd immediately die. Because there's a camera down your throat. Because if you're in a bar fight, that's a way to kill you. <laughs> you have a bar fight in like an AV room. Like a, like a, like a bar fight with like uh, filmmakers. Why was my belt off and why didn't they put it back on? <laughs> Wouldn't they want to... What message were they trying to send? Like, no, no, leave it off. Leave it off. I, I want him to know exactly what... <laughs> The emotional like the crisis doctor, I went through. See, if the doctor was in the room, it would it would just be like kind of like, oh, was I, you know, it's like it's almost not funny because it's just sort of like, oh, what happened? But the fact that the doctor's gone makes it funny to me because it's like this is a story happened that he was like, I, I, I need some space, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and I, I then she's st- like, I want to start sexually assaulting other other patients. <laughs> it's, it's like ordinary people now. It's like she's hold, she's trying to hold it together. And like, where did the doctor go? He'll be back when he when when yeah. you have calmed down. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Yes, he's staying at Shutters for three weekends. No, he's gonna... All right, she's like, he'll be, he'll, be, he'll be back later, and then she's like cleaning some tools, and then like th- uh, 20 seconds goes by, and she goes, you know he's a good doctor, and he works hard. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> so he's allowed to grab, to, to, then, to, to play with my dick? Is that what you think happened? But then the thing, the thing that they tell you, like when you're getting, I had all four wisdom teeth out way too late in life, and they said that there's a chance that a whole, and stop me if I've talked about this before, there's a chance that you'll perforate the sinus bone up here above your yeah. your teeth, and I remembered signing that thing. Yeah, and if it happens, it's not a big deal. Your bone will regenerate. It'll you know it'll be a thing. I don't remember that after the thing because I'm drugged out of my mind. The next morning, I get up, rinse my mouth out like you're not supposed to like like spit and do anything violent with your sinuses. Oh god! And I, and I lean forward, and everything in my mouth poured out of my nose because there's a hole in my face, and now everything. Then I, I was eating some miso soup. And I leaned, I, that night I leaned over, I leaned over to get more miso soup, and the miso soup that was currently in my mouth went back into the bowl. <laughs> I was, uh, You're like a Muppet. <laughs> You're like the cookie monster. This motherfucker don't like cookies. I was, a, I, I was a fountain. I was a, <laughs> and then I freaked out, and I, was, like, like, I, I called the doctor, and he's like, remember this? we had this big conversation, it's going to be fine. I go, what do I do? He goes, just don't sneeze for two months. Ah. Like, fuck you. Where's my Cheez-Its? Where's my Cheez-Its? The last time you talked about this, I probably mentioned this. We're like an old married couple that both have dementia, <laughs> and we're just triggering each other like, what is uh, the Navy soup? Navy, I was in the Navy. You were in the Navy. I, I was in the... I, 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 the your like, story's going to be about the song Me So Horny. But there's a... Uh, there's a, there's a nerve in your upper lip. That's why in cartoons, like when Scooby-Doo's about to sneeze, Shaggy will like, like put his thing. It's like, I always, th- I always thought that was so dumb. It was like, oh, you're about, but it's like, there's like a, if you push really hard on your upper lip, like if you're ever in a situation where you feel like you truly have to sneeze and like it's a, it's a do or die, like, I, like I've done it, it works. Like you just push, shove really hard. It's like some kind of nerve in there. Oh, well. All right. <sighs> Okay, yeah, so a, yeah, so it's not about the nose. It's about the it's about the lip. Yeah, it's pushing on the lip. I don't know why you have to do it with your with a fucking gangster style with your side of your finger. I don't know why people don't go like this. I guess because if people were coming, 
like from behind you or in front of you. They think, is that is that dude picking his nose? And you so say you want to be like, no, dude, I'm like a, I'm like a, I'm just doing a crazy mustache uh, game. And then you can tell them later, sorry about lying to you. I was trying to stop sneezing. And they're like, oh, cool. I thought you were trying to mime a mustache. No, dude. But, and it's like, well, shit, at least you weren't picking your nose. Like, no, and it didn't even look like it did it. No, because you weren't using the tip of your finger. Conversely, if you're a ninja, what I learned in ninja magazines in the 80s is that you want to point your sword directly at your prey because it's invisible from a distance that way. Think about it. You hold your sword like this. Oh, there's a ninja. He's got a sword. Go like this. What's that ninja doing? Yeah. I'm going to kick his ass. I'm going to charge at him. I'll tell you right now, if I see a ninja in front of me and I can't tell what he's doing, I know he's doing something fucking ninja style. Well, because of the magazines. But yeah, because of the magazines. I mean, a lot of ninjas were mad at these magazines in the 80s. Like, you. Well, did, did you have a subscription to Ninja Magazine? <laughs> it, I think it, it I was did 1982, too. and think, you, think, you got one with oh, your locker. Oh, oh, did, did I have Ninja Stars? I had all the Ninja Stars. Yeah, I mean, you, you could make ninja. them out of paper, right? You know how to make a Ninja Star out of paper. No, you Do you millennials know how to make a Ninja Star out of paper? I, got, I heard some mixed messages there, but uh, mostly no. That's, Wait, something. I, 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 That's something you could learn from... A lethal, a lethal Ninja Star, one that could break, break skin? Well, no, you hit someone... As with everything, if you hit someone in the eye with it, I'm sure it could do some damage. Right. That goes for socks, pillowcases, ferrets... Because when, when I was in popcorn, when I, when I was like traveling, kisses. If you kiss someone in the eye really hard, you could blind them, or you can give them mono, monoocleosis. That's what they call it. It's when you get it in the eye. Well, that's just, that's just that. science, you pieces of shit. Monoocleosis. That's what that. That's what the Cyclops had in uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 Upanishads. <laughs> the the uh, the the, the uh, Odyssey. Sp Spencer, did, 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 were you ever a weapon enthusiast? Did you have like throwing stars? Oh or yeah. Katanas. I mean, come on. Do you even have to ask? Yeah, of course. Yeah. They just Chinatown. You could get anything, man. This guy. This guy I invented seagull hunting. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but by burying yourself in the sand and having a, a bag? What, what was your weapon of choice? That, that was in a ninja magazine. <laughs> I tuned it towards seagulls. It was, it was, a, it was a, that was like retired ninja quarterly. Yeah. Uh, like, like uh, uh, fulfilled your blood oath. Uh, kids moved out. Try hunting some seagull. It's a great way to placate your neurotic compulsion to avenge and be invisible. Without uh, 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 breaking, the without pain. without uh, pinching the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see Spencer. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. I can see you as having owned at least one pair of nunchucks in your lifetime. Not nunchucks, no. No, those are those are dangerous, man. You really got to know how to use them before they stop being dangerous to oneself. Yeah, nun <laughs> yeah. Nunchucks is the weapon that kills you before you kill you. Yeah. you learn to kill somebody else with it. I think that's why in every scene in movies, like that's why the person starts off with like ten minutes of like nunchucking, because he's because then the person's supposed to think like, God damn, that's a long time without hitting yourself in the nuts. I better get the fuck out of here. If this guy decides to hit me in the head, he might succeed. I'm fucking next. He has avoided his groin for many, many minutes. And he keeps going down. He keeps yeah, no, he's purposely. It's like Houdini asking people he's to punch doing him in between the, the legs. Harlem Globetrotter <laughs> shit. Uh, I think we. I think we. I think we. We, we should. We should uh, get our guest uh, prepared. Is, is she? Is she ready back there? Or do we need to? Do I need to say that and then pause so that like? Uh, I don't know. There's no feedback. There's no feedback loop in this show. We don't know what we're doing. We're just flying blind. Uh, our guest is a, is a new friend. I, I, I met her through, I don't know, kind of strange circumstances, but uh, they're, they're also kind of boring circumstances because they're kind of work-related. But, but, but uh, I, I just, I, 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 uh, I was like, well, this is a person that we should meet. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm bad at introductions. She, she's, a, she's, <laughs> she's a rapper. She has a bus. She's just back from Burning Man, and boy, are her wheels tired. Um, Boy, and her and, arms burnt. I think that's yeah. Um, uh, let's bring up uh, B Squid. Yeah. Let's 
that's that's the music we picked to bring you on. It's beautiful. Hello, uh, B Squid. Hello. B Squid, nice are you, you are you are you a are, are you a drinker? Do you want do you, do you want me to touch your ice? You can touch my ice. Do you do you want ice? Yeah, I'd love some ice. Thank you. Hey Dan, can I can I touch your ice? You want to touch my ice? I want to touch your ice. You can touch my ice. I'll touch hers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not touch each other's ices. Here, this is my ice. Hand this to Jeff so he can touch it. This is a touchy subject, you guys. <laughs> yeah, you need that right now. What's Thank our bit you? number? What's that? How did you guys meet? What's the origin story of, of your friendship? We met in the, in the desert hot springs. <laughs> Uh, we had both just robbed different banks, uh, and we were burying our briefcases True under story. the same tree. Uh, you know, me and Cody and uh, and uh, and our mutual friend Evan uh, were uh, up there. I was working on this Vonnegut thing that I'm adapting with Evan, Sirens of Titan, and Cody was working on her thing. Um, and uh, we decided let's take a week and uh, and and st I've, I've never tried that. Cody always does that. She gets results. Like she goes away. Like a like a sick cat that goes under the stove, like like where's the cat? And it comes out, goes. I wrote a draft. Um, uh, I was like, I want to try that. I, 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 and 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 uh, yeah, and it did work. And Evan and I would go out there and like. So I was, we, we got two like bungalows in the in the in this in the, at this like resort. And, uh, and it's like at a discount because it was so goddamn hot and you're going to the desert. They're like, if you come here, we'll give you like a dollar. Um, uh, th and, and, then, and then there was a, and then we worked for like a, a, a business week and then toward the end of it, you uh, came up in your bus because you're friends with Evan. Yeah. It's not that exciting a story, but it's also kind of like Would you say you have a bus? Like what, what, what kind of bus am I picturing right now? It's a short bus. It's, uh, it's painted blue. It says my name on the side. It says B-Squid. I use it to tour in. It's a tour of the country. Yeah. And, you, and you perform rapping? I rap, yes. Yeah. I do rap shows around, uh, up, Here. you know. Thank you. Around the coast and inland and anywhere they'll have me. Um, and you, you you do a lot of live performance, right? I mean, obviously. Yeah. But like, so so are there are there are there live venues that make you more nervous or that you hate doing or? You know, every one is like a totally different experience. There's uh, some that are bigger, um, and sometimes they're fuller than others, and sometimes they're kind of empty for big places, and that's kind of weird. Uh, but I don't think there's anything really that makes me more nervous than anything else, except for, I guess, sometimes when you're in that environment where you know you've got people who you care about like watching mm -hmm. and then you're really it's oh like, okay it's like well, really like on your family mind. or friends or both oh yeah like family and friends and you're like oh, oh shit i can't believe i wrote this line into the song and then you just like kind of jump over it weirdly and you know that kind do of you thing. ever like so when people like how do you explain to your family does your family like kind of bust your balls like 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 like, like when you like you like they're like so what what do, what do you do and you're like i'm a is it hard to say i'm a rapper Sometimes uh, they support me generally. I mean, we're all a little weird, I guess. My dad is a piano technician, and my sister is, um, she like builds Moog synthesizers and she's studying for that. And oh, okay. So they really support me in my, when I decided I was going to take the music route um, because I've been working in film all this time, and that was like also a little weird for some of the people who I grew up with. It was like, oh, it's like a creative field, and you're never going to make it in film, but. You know, here we are. So, <laughs> and we have another mutual friend, Open Mike Eagle, who was on the show a couple months ago, and you know him too. That's what we discovered over over dinner. And uh, but 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 so I just wanted to drop that. Uh, the, the, so you, you need to respect me as an interviewer. Hell yeah! I, I know Open Mike Eagle. Do. I will close this mic and turn it into a falcon. Uh, dumb, <laughs> so dumb. I'm like Weird Al Yankovic now. The, 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 uh, but he's fine. Why do I? Why am I shitting on him? All right. So how did you get involved? I, I, how did you get involved in rap? How, how did you get interested in it? What drew you to it? You said your primary interest was film. So then take us to the threshold in your biopic where you're like, I'm I'm a rap. Well, I've always written poetry like since I was a little kid, um, and then I started to go through this phase like in you know 2010, 2011, where like if I would get mad at work, I would just be like, Oh yeah, well I'm gonna write a poem, uh, <laughs> and I would do that. Uh, and I wouldn't, you know, share them with anybody, but eventually, like, somebody showed me, like, hip-hop music, and then I was able to 
take these secret poems I was writing and, and stitch them over beats and then make something really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and I put out a music video once and it got a lot of attention kind of right away. Um, and so the, someone called me and asked me to come and screen that video at this event that he was throwing at O'Brien's in Santa Monica. And I was like, I'm not gonna screen that shitty video. It's not happening, but I'll do a 30 minute set. And he was like, all right, that's great, cool, booked. Two months later, <laughs> I had to write that music. Right. Because I didn't have any, but um, I put it together. It made it happen. I think that's how the good people have their first, you know, like if you don't just like somehow your ego like makes you say you're going to do something. Like what else? That's what Channel 101 was for filmmakers when we were starting it in uh, 2003, God, whatever. It was like Ra Ra Shrab and I knew if we don't if we don't have a like an appointment like where everyone's going to either know that we suck because we didn't finish something or we have something like that's there. Yeah, whatever. Why am I explaining this to you? Um, totally do, you, do, you, do you make your own beats or do you have people that you work with? I work with people. Um, beat I, people. I have beat people. I have a friend in New Orleans who I met when I was working on a job over there. His name is Raddy Skurvix. He produced my full album, my first album, which I put out in November. It's called Cloud Nine. Um, and then I have another producer who I work with regularly. His name is DJ Bless One, and he lives in El Paso. So sometimes when I'm crossing the country to tour, I'll like stop with Raddy and we'll make a song, and then I'll stop with Bless and we'll make a song, and then you know wherever I can do that. Who was the first? I know you you had like kind of a mentor character you were telling me about when we were talking, but then also like who just pop culturally like like who was the rap uh, artist that kind of like the I don't know like your early. Uh, I want to, now I really want to do this because I'm listening to this all the time, or I don't know, early influence? Is that what I'm trying to get around to? One of my favorite bands growing up was this screamo band called Glassjaw, and I love them till the day I die. <laughs> um, and they're amazing. But anyway, it's a little intense, very different. What you call it? Screamo? Screamo, yeah. I, I'm not familiar with that. Oh, yeah, it's like emo you'd be, you'd be, where they be surprised scream. to know that I am not familiar <laughs> with Screamo. I feel like you might be. I mean, you're I might maybe like a closet I just, I, Screamo I, fan, but you're there. It's there. I, I just don't know what it is. I might, I might, might be my new favorite thing. <laughs> aren't you, well, aren't what, you what makes a Screamo lawyer? band a Screamo band? Um, well, they'll sing and they'll have their heavy guitars and it's like kind of a, I don't know, like a, an indie hardcore music genre, but then they scream at the top of their lungs like, right. and it's beautiful. See, see, I don't. I, I, if, if I scream once, I lose my voice for right, a too. month. I don't it's know. art. What the, they do is craft. The people that can scream, ah, they do night that after all night. The time. Yeah. Song like do a two-hour set night after night on a tour. Like yeah, that is a craft. There is something in there happening. But are these? Are, are, is, is screamo rapping? When no. Screaming? So oh. there was a singer. His singer's name is. is Dan, Dan, don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Well, I mean, anybody can rap, you know, like, I think probably one of the first raps that I learned was, like, in a Rancid song, you know, which, without even realizing that that was rap. I was just, I just, like, really liked the fast chop of it, and I wanted to learn it. Um, and then, but anyway, the, the singer of Glassjaw, his name is Daryl Palumbo, and he did a hook for um, an artist named Cage, and Cage was out of New York, and I listened to that album to hear that hook. Like that part where he sings, like I heard the whole album and I bought it and now I have it. <laughs> I grew up with it, you know, because of that. So like I kind of let like people who I'm, you know, love and am following like to bring me to my next kind of like bubble to explore in and then to the next thing. So, yeah. Well, here comes the, the part where I show you that I'm bad at what I do and I don't mean rapping, which I will blow your mind with later. Yes, you will. <laughs> but... It will blow my mind if we can just do this like willy nilly. But you did bring like a thumb drive of beats, didn't you? I did. And do we? Are we? Do, would you mind like doing like? It, uh, what? What would you like most? What would you be following your bliss? Do you want to just do uh, one of your numbers? I sound like your dad. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> can you spin some of your wax for us? <laughs> or 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 whatever. I mean, what, what what's your preference to do? Like like or? I mean, I brought four different songs with me to perform, but I don't expect to be able to have time to do all of them. So, I mean, I could do whatever. Yeah, I could pick, like, spit one. No, I think, like, you should two. you should do one that's mm -hmm. like, all right, well, well, here, I'll, I'll, I'll Dan explain what you should do then. Uh, <laughs> what did you, if you, if, unless, unless there's something that would make you happier, do one that's just, like, your thing that you do, the, <laughs> and then, and then we'll talk a little more, because there was, like, this, you just came back from Burning Man, and I want to talk about that thing. 
the not Burning Man, but the sure, yes. other thing. Uh, the but but uh, and uh, and th- and th- and then at a certain point, obviously, I'm gonna uh, 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 get some uh, like, like Open Mike Eagle taught me like lessons about my freestyling. I want those lessons. Well, I'll give you his Are, lessons, nice. but then I need more from you because I didn't come here for nothing. Be, do I call you B Squid or do I call you by your your first name? You can call me B Squid or Squid or yes. Allie because that's also my name. Allie, all right. <laughs> So what if it was Agnes? Yeah. <laughs> then Agnes it would be amazing. Funny. Obviously, Agnes would be the greatest name of all time. I know, Agnes. Yeah, I, go I, Agnes. Like my, my, my riff of what a what a what a sad uh, name would be. It's like like yeah, no, that would be cool because that's I'm 44. <laughs> but Squid, are you are you a comfortable freestyler? Do you like that, or do you, is that something you enjoy? Or? Uh, it's something I enjoy. I actually haven't broken my public freestyling cherry, so that would be a thing. Well, the bar is incredibly low here. Right? So, <laughs> It's, you're it's you're, like, you're going to be the Babe Ruth of freestyling. Here, nice, no but I think what. first let's you know like let's 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 warm up with just a like one of your how do you how do you tell them what to play though if you wanted to just do one of your set things? I want to do a thousand winters. Fantastic. It was the one I said I wasn't going to do. Zach, no. you up, you up on that, Zach? Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's we don't you know. We don't always do this. It's worth the wait. Oh, there we go. Should I, like, stand up? Yeah. Make it showbiz. What about a lighting a lighting effect that's a little less butcher shop? If it takes forever, I will wait for you for a thousand winters. Till you're here beside me Till I'm holding you Till I hear you sigh Here in my arms Because I know you're waiting too And all my thoughts involve you So tell me what I cannot do For my own good I'll wait for you I'm searching time and watching close For all the signals coast to coast Clouds are painting tentacles Compass pointing where to go East into the sunrise Cause I try and try to land in time To sand the dry like paper With some grit unleash a shine With blue balloons I float to you Where I will grow it out of these boots And if you leave and travel on My heart will follow with a song You can take my magic wand Repeat these spells across the pond One week flies by like Dumbo did They thought he'd fall but he learned to live Of all the hearts this road will bring I hope each one enlightens me So in your presence I am free To gift you with eternity Lighter than a feather, I am stricken like a match You and me expand to fill the space and plug the gaps I miss you, need you, want you bad And while we wait, we may go mad But I'll be there when leaves turn brown And I'll be singing you the song Dream of daylight, think of me, I'm always somewhere you could be Feeding every harmony with hearts of possibility If it's in I will wait for you for a thousand winters. I will wait for you till you're here beside me. Till I'm holding you. Till I hear you sigh here in my arms. If it's Hell yeah. B-Squid. B-Squid. Woo! 
Thank you, guys. I, I was mortified in the beginning because I was, I, what, was there, w- there wasn't enough monitor or something. What, 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 what? I couldn't really hear the beat, but then I kind of got it anyway. <laughs> yeah, you, you, had to, you had to squat. Yeah, if we, do, if we do more of that, can we get more of the sound in the monitor? Uh, when, when I'm up. You... <laughs> I, I kind of wanted to say. I won't play it that shit. I'll, I'll, I'll stop the show. I was I was kind of thinking maybe we could experiment where either we play that same beat again and Dan tries to j- j- tries. To well, I think I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's, okay. Let's, so then let's put. But I also want to hear that. I want to hear that singer songwriter hook stuff too. Oh, I yes, want to, the song. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I yeah. got it. I got it. Okay. Perfect. Let's give it up for uh, for P Squid. He's on squids. Here a thousand winters I wait for you I'll have no splinters inside my shoe A thousand winters and a half a dozen falls I went to my friend's house and I can't take it all. Yo, I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of society shit. I'm so, so sick of it. I'm gonna sit on it. I'm gonna take my ass and put it down on it. So, I don't wait. I can't fucking hear it. God damn it. Don't fuck with me. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Going down to the street. I saw everyone's feet and I went up to the sky. So, I can't fucking hear the beat. Piece of shit. Damn a thousand falls. I'm sick of this shit. Gonna put it. Gonna put on a hat and spit in it and then put it back on my head. Cause I'm. I'm, 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 I'm I got a zit. To, went into my car. Quit fire. Which I drove to the moon and to, 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 ate some tar. It, it burned me. It put fire down my ass. I got to, 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 too fast when you rap. Too fast you can't improvise when you rap. Too fast. There's no such thing as rapping that fast when you improvise. What? I saw your mama the other day. She looked at me and asked if I was gay. I said, I don't have that honor, bitch. Mom's closed minded. She's a homophobe. I went down the street, got on a telephone. Why, why is there still a telephone on the street? Because I'm a time traveler. My dad is Dan Rather. Played by Robert Redford in the movie Truth. Have you heard about that? It's about the it's about the, the that thing about George Bush's military service. For a thousand winters. Whoa, what? What thousand days? What? 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 For a thousand million calendars. Gonna sing the purple haze. Tell you what about that? Fuck about a cat. Fuck the dog too. Then a rat. Put them all together in a jar. Threw the shit and said, fuck it. Aura. <laughs> Go. 35 Go. springs. <laughs> I saw you the other day. You had a tattoo. I broke my heart. What about you? Uh, I haven't seen you in 10 years. What's the Facebook status? Why is it still single? You know you got you got into somebody else two weeks after we broke up. I sense overlap. I'm not stalking. I sense overlap. I'm not a Facebook stalker. I'm policing overlap. Police overlap. Think about that. With your butt flaps. Rap it up, dap, dap. Rap it dap. A rap, rap, rap. Think about that. For a thousand winters, it snows so long. I hope my zombie dragon doesn't go to the wrong side. I can't. Got your dragon out of ice. You got some chains. Don't know how I made them. Pull your dragon out of ice, brought it back to life, made its eyes blue. Now I'm gonna cut like a knife through the wall. The rubble's gonna fall. Then I'm gonna walk over it all. I'm gonna go south. Right? I always get that mixed up. South is is bad. South is it's like the Korean thing. It's like 
can never keep track. North of the walls, man. Fucking thousand winters. Yo, it's like a thousand winters. Yo, yo. Ain't no fucking summer in sight. Bitch. I like this game. I mean, I don't think my version's perfect. We're gonna go to the judges. It brought tears to my eyes a little. <laughs> I don't think, you know, I, yeah, I don't think mine's perfect, but you had a chance to write yours, and I, I did have the advantage of watching yours, and so it's, it's even. Like, I think we tied. I'd say so. But, yeah, so Open Mike Eagle, he divested me. <laughs> You're gonna, <laughs> if you want to know how I got to that level. <laughs> Open Mike Eagle, like, he... He taught me that I don't have to say fuck your mama all the time. Like it's a do you have crutches when you freestyle? Like like phrases that you like lean on when you're like you know, killing time? Sometimes. Do what are what are they? Uh I try not to repeat them. Like as an exercise. So right now, I mean I guess if we start freestyling, you I think you'll figure it out, but uh, you don't want to. You don't want to give them power. Well, yeah, because I'm. They're they're changing. Mm. They change every time I. Freestyle. Oh, so if I drop the fuck your mamas, which as soon as open mic left, I was like back on it. Yeah, it's like a, it's like the sauce. You know, you gotta. You but everybody just kick was it. cheering. Like he made me not say fuck your mama for like a rap, and it was like you gotta push were, yourself. Everybody was like, "Yay, you're learning and growing." And then he and then he left. He's like, "I'm rich," and I was like, "Fuck your mama." <laughs> but uh, yeah, is there like. Did any of the beats that you brought for freestyling, are they kind of like a little s slower? Uh, apparently they're, they're all licensed, but they were slower. I just, uh, you know, so I guess there's other beats uh, on hand. Oh, we have some. Yeah, I mean, we, Dan, we, you, you really push yourself, I mean, lyrically. That you're was pushing, great. You know, you're pushing you really, yourself to the you limit. You moved very quickly there. Yeah. But, but, the, but the, the kicky baby dance was really, really <laughs> on, on point tonight. That, that was some good kicky baby going on there. I, for me, that song is about uh, the cycle of life. Uh, uh, my main takeaway is that you're sick of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's that's the main message. Thing. Yeah. Kind of a through line there. That's how I perceive. That's probably, that's like my perception of like a female rapper. I'm like, well, she must be sick of this shit. Like I, I'm, I'm like, like sick of the shit. What if that? Or like, like if anyone's rapping that fast, like, like what, what else could it be? Like I don't know. I'm just sharing my obstacles. Uh, Squid, do you think there's any any chance, like subconsciously, that based on what you just saw, that you might accidentally bite some of Dan's freestyle rap? <laughs> I hope I don't. I mean, I would feel really terrible if I did. You know, like because I respect you and your freestyles are sacred to that moment. Is it lame to uh, use the word lame to uh, as a derogatory way for the because it's ableist? Okay, starting over. Okay. Is it is it bad? <sighs> what a boring world we've created. I hope Nazis take it over. Is it <laughs> is it negative to take more than three ibuprofen? Uh, I, 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 is it is it is it is it dumb? Is it, is it, is it bad that his beats are so retarded? <laughs> Is it bad to ask? I feel like this is something that journalism does to to the female persuasion when they're like, you know, like like like, like to to corner you and say like, what's the state of of women in rap? Like, so that you might, but but I don't think anyone's li listening to this. So like, if I mean, I don't know, just like, what's your do you, do you have any opinions about that, or are you like gender blind like about rap and go? <laughs> In case you hadn't noticed, I'm a lady, no hating, just saying they always underpay me. When new lanes are laid in, I'm relating, gaze changing, window pane is praying, new free way to play in, escaping, creating, something missed by education. Labelers are looking for your contribution, if laboring, tailoring, or execution, impaling, failure with a loose end, goosehead's body running crazy in a chicken's pen, gotta feel for him, he's foreign to the lore, where we're supposed to get bored, eight to four with chores and performance, executive bird's eye, scores and ignorant, his core, an orb of explorer sentiment, especially the movers and shakers who can't afford you, holes are dumped by their players. The system regrets to inform him his mission is canceled and wishing concussion discussion of structure that he's been disrupting is kept at a minimum. Take this chrysanthemum, let's all remember him. In memorandum, the rebel of random reaction is granted. Museum in the Hall of All Fame. A graveyard of hunger pain served in the name of the young and ashamed. Yeah. So 
All right, well, I think you're avoiding the question. I did, okay. Answer the fucking question. <laughs> so, that's my, um, it's actually, I performed that rap. Uh, I, knew, I knew we were both going to do the same joke. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I, halfway through it, did you stop listening to the uh, actual, I, I was like, like, for the first half, I was like, God damn, this is like, I, I'm like, my brain is growing new synapses, and then the second half is like, what's the bit that I'm going to do? <laughs> Which is probably, there's probably the second half of, the, of, of that is like, and they're always just thinking about what they're going to say next. <laughs> no, I love, I love being a female and I love doing what I do. I think that, you know, it, it's like, you know, the game of... Um, Thrones. Guess who? You remember that game, Guess Who? Right? right. With all the dudes' yeah. faces. And you're like, oh, this one's got, my guy's got glasses or my guy's I got know, a beard. Or, David. My guy's a lady. And you're like, oh, it's one of these two people. Right. So that's kind of what it feels like, you know? Like, not a lot of people get your card, but when they do get your card, it's like, it stands out, you know? Right. So that's oh, a good thing. Yeah. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's whatever. It's, yeah. It is what it is. And it I'm, is what it is. I'm a strong, independent woman, I think. I, I feel I try to be anyway, and, uh, and so I don't, like, really let the industry walk all over me, which is why I'm an independent starring artist. But, <laughs> hey, you know, you got to do what you got to do in this life. <laughs> now, you... You rocking that Los Feliz cap? Are you a Los Feliz native? Or? Yes, I am. Well, not a native, but I, I live there. That's where you live in. That's where I live. All right, that's my hometown. Yeah. That's Dan's hometown. Um, uh, to, Sweet. Just to get grim for a second, because it's kind of just historically grim. Like, you were just at Burning Man, and, and I've never been, and uh, you've been there many, many times. Like, Seven times. Uh, the, this, I, I, and then we're like, you, you're talking about the heat, and I was like, and then the obvious dumb joke because I was like yeah it was a little literal burning man there were burning men there and then you're like no there was one because this fucking thing happened I don't know how many of you heard about this so, like, like it's probably easy to to miss news these days like like but but do you I mean do, should I should I say what happened and then you talk about it like or or do you want to just take it from there um like, well I was there uh and I was sitting kind of like on a like on the I want to say the three o'clock side maybe and from where I was I wasn't able to see it occur at the fire but um, when the man was burning this year on Saturday night there was a guy and his name was Aaron Joel Mitchell and he ran into the fire um, and committed suicide and that was actually really like a really sad thing I didn't find out about until the next morning um, you said he was in there for 30 minutes. Like 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds, 30 minutes. Okay. You know what? Still too long to Still be too in a long. fire. Still so, too long. He, I, I'm sorry. I, I know nothing about this. I, I was wondering about... There was a guy, a, yeah. guy, a guy just like ran into the fire. but he, To, 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 to self-immolate and, and, and kill himself by fire at Burning Man. I mean, nobody knows why he did it. Oh, really? Nobody knows if he was on drugs or... Right. They know he wasn't drunk. Um, they know that he had been sober previously and that he was like a... a, a beaming gentle soul and um and that you know you nobody can really speak on why he did it or i think it's a sign of the times that i immediately was like i don't I'm, i won't be surprised if i find out this isn't the case but the first thought in my head is i wonder if this guy is just like fuck it this is it like 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 this point in history like the, and it's whether or not it, it often these things aren't they're not sometimes a cigar is a cigar and like who knows why he did it but like it's it's already notable that that was the first thought in my head because it wouldn't have been last year i wouldn't have been like i bet <laughs> i bet he did that because because the world is ending like, it, 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 so it's like it, but the other crazy thing is that is is realizing that you were there the entire time you were on one side of a fire with a guy that ran into it and basically never came out. I mean, they fetched him out and then he died in the hospital. Um, but you didn't find out about it till the next day. Right. And I was like, okay, so I need to recalibrate my definition of what a large fire is because, like, I, I've never fire. been to Burning Man. I was like, like, I, I, the, 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 to be po the, the, how many people are gathered around the the actual Burning Man? They say there's like there were like fifty thousand people Jesus there, Christ. and so there's like a whole perimeter of like party buses and, and art cars that kind of like surround it, and then within that between that perimeter, and then there's like a perimeter of um, you know rangers like making sure nobody runs into the fucking fire. Um, in between that is where everybody sits and stands, and you know it's a beautiful fire show there's like this whole procession beforehand it's like very ceremonious you know they've been doing it i think like 30 years and then there's um fireworks the best damn fire sh fireworks show you'll ever see that burn 
Um, and then, uh, and then the fire and the fire was like insane this year. Like it was insane. I mean, it was kind of like a structure around the man and the man was like in the center of it. Usually he's like up on a post or like up somehow, but this year the theme was radical rituals. So what they did was they made the, the man almost look like the traditional temple that is at burning man as well. So there was like kind of a secondary, it was. It was a really spiritual year um, at, at Burning Man. There, everything was built like it was a shrine of some kind. So I mean, there's like cynical dots I'm connecting here. Where you're describing. Well, this year they tried something different, where they had like an in entry way on mm -hmm. the fire. I mean, <laughs> they kind of designed it like a place you could go into. I, I guess so. I mean, I, well, it's, it's, this, 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 this guy broke through the lines of marshals and people there mm -hmm. and made it made it through. Yeah and thrust himself into the fire. Mm -hmm. And they got him out, like h half alive. They got him out, like after 30 seconds, and they you know, flew him to safety, but he didn't. Jesus so, Christ. Like, yeah, I mean, it's really sad. Yeah, I mean, that's, but we don't know why, if, if that was a moment of passion or something he'd been planning on, or? No idea. Yeah, like, wow. He apparently didn't leave a note or anything. So. What was the reaction after that happened? Like, did, how, how much of that crowd, because the whole crowd couldn't possibly have seen all that maybe, right? I mean, I remember hearing, like, sound come from the other side. Like, sometimes the, the whole crowd, like, you know, sparks up some kind of, like, chant or cheer or, like, wave of howling at the moon or, like, or somebody's, like, calling for their friend Sarah, and they're like, Sarah! No. And then the whole crowd is screaming Sarah until this girl Sarah is fucking found or something. But, I mean, like, you, you could hear something was happening on the oh other side, God. but, I, I mean... And I you've done that seven no times idea. in a row, like, been kind of there at the fire, mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, and you, you, you look back and, and go, oh, yeah, something happened, but something's always happening. And, I mean, that that is such a... That's such a weird, crazy metaphor for... If I end that sentence with life, I devalue my observation because this sounds dumb. That's such a metaphor for life, but but it is. I mean, it, that, that you can't say that's a metaphor for society. You can't say that's, that is that is what life is. That's great that, that we're all gathered together and that there is tragedy happening. That that from a distance, from the other side of the of the fire, which is the greatest thing that's ever happened, and it's like there can be a person. It, it, and, 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 and it can be mistaken from certain perspectives for just a, 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 another part of a celebration. And then the next day, it's like, yeah, dude, yeah. man. I, I, it's like, like, I, it, I, like, like so what, unrelated to that, because I don't want to follow up that story with like, I want to go to Burning Man at this point. I, I, like, like, <laughs> I, 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 but, but it's like, at this point, uh, yeah, after the, in the aftermath of the election and stuff, it's like my mind and soul are a shambles of, of white, fragile shards. Like, I bought a gun. Uh, I'm like, uh, I'm planning on just doomsday prepping in a desert. I don't know how. I, I'm going to die of thirst, like digging a hole straight down because I play Minecraft. Um, <laughs> I, I, I like, 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 and, and, like, I, so it, it's, it's like I look back on, like, a, a 10 year. Uh, history of using the phrase Burning Man as a comedy writer to like, you know, mean hippie and dippy and whatever, just like make fun or whatever. Like, and, and now it's like because of this year, it's like this is something that I got to go to at some point. You would definitely obviously recommend it, right? Like, like maybe not to everybody, but you, you wouldn't go seven times if you, you weren't getting something out of it. You're not like monetizing when you go there. No, I'm not monetizing at all when I go there incognito and nobody, you know, like I'm not selling anything there. Oh, you don't even perform there. I, I, maybe I do perform would, oh, there. Okay. I do perform there. I'll perform my songs and my set and, um, you know, it'll be a lot of fun, but it's not something that I'm like banking on or being like, follow my website. You know, right. it's like not like that. It's sharing what you've been working on, all like your art for the year. You know, and bringing that out and, and making sure that your friends and family and people get to be touched by it, like, however they can. But I definitely recommend going. I think it's an amazing uh, spiritual journey. And, um, and if you need it for, you know, it can really open new windows of perception for anybody who goes. It really changes the how way do you see shit. I'm sorry. Uh, did, uh, how much did that guy's death, like, affect the rest of the proceedings there or, like... Did, did it cast a total pall over it, or was or did it kind of move along? It was kind of dark, um, just from my experience. Which I mean, I'm not like on the inner circles of that of the burn and, and what's going on in there. So, you know, it it the news came to me in passing, and it was just like really strange. But um, and a lot of people like knew about it, but were not talking about it. You know, because they didn't want that dark, dismal like 
black stain on their week, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, then you go to the Temple Burn the next night, and there's this like, gigantic fence, and it's like up around it. And I've never seen that before, like a fence. And they're like, nobody is jumping in this damn fire. What's the, oh, so wait, so just to, so the, is there a fire multiple nights? Uh -huh. and, okay. There's lots of fire. Okay, but the, that, there's one. There's there's the one big Burning Man where the man burns. So like, that's not the end of everything. Everyone doesn't end that and go like, Jesus Christ, I got a PowerPoint tomorrow. <laughs> oh, somebody does, I think, because people like leave. People leave, but Burning like that that Saturday night. That's like the biggest and best party of the week. And then Sunday, usually people are like leaving all day and then leaving all night. And the, the Temple Burn is like a really quiet and like spiritual experience for people. Like, people don't, like, talk through it, right. stand up through it. This is a joke, but also it's probably true. So it's like Comic-Con. Like, <laughs> like, Sunday's like... like yeah, exactly. Like, there's, oh, Just there's, like Comic-Con. Yeah. Lots of costumes, lots of weirdos and freaks. Uh, See, like, I, I, I'm not a big fan of major crowds and a lot of dirt. It seems like a lot of dirt and crowds. Du it's like dust, but yeah. Dust. It's, it's pretty but dirty. also, what was the temperature? Because it was bloody hot during that time, right? Um, yeah, it was hot. It was really hot. Like 120? Like what was it? It was crazy. I don't know. It was it was really hot. It's it was a like, dry heat. <laughs> <laughs> it was hot at night too. It like usually gets like really cold at night, but this year was like really hot at night, and so like you're trying to like get dressed to go out at night because at night it's like a different place. It's like a it's like you're going to you know Antarctica for the night or something, just hanging out in the snow. Um, and so you're like, I gotta put on my heaviest shit and my my brightest things because it's like pitch black. And then so when the nights would roll around, I'd be like. Is it a pants night? Should I put a shirt on? What do I do here? Every night's a pants night. Give me a beat. <laughs> yeah. Do we have a beat? Can, can, can you guys do like a duet? Like, a, like, a, like maybe yeah, a kick, yeah. kick it back and forth freestyle? Yeah. That's why I wanted like kind of a lazy beat. Like, like yeah, a little, so, something something that could be a little more methodic. Something kind of on the mellow tip. Zach, you got that? All right. Yo, it's one minute away from 9-11, but we're going to wrap right through this. Every night's a pants night. For all you wondering what should be on your legs. If you think shorts, yeah, think again. Oh, shit. Yo. I see you walking away from me with your feet. I I wonder what's down the street that's for you and not for me. That we should separate like this It hurts me I rhymed me with me And then I took a pee into a jar And drank it <laughs> Why don't you go? Okay Tonight I'm walking with pants on I'm doing a little dance I'm kicking babies like I was Scottastic and it was romance on the stage with the people who were looking at me. It's nice to meet and I love you. My name is Squid, Squiddy B. No, it's not like that. It's the other way around. B Squid, that's my name and I originate in your town. But I rep Miami where my family's rocking and they rolling with the storm. Irma and I not holding back. I know that they are waiting for that. They're waiting for that. They've got their stuff in their cabinets and kind of whack that the windstorm of 195 miles per hour whatever it is is gonna be a tiny rain shower to the natives of that place because the storm was born in our face and we do it like we in a race extreme weather phenomenon yep. don't be blind to what's going on inconvenient is the facts you need me to send you a fax about it? <laughs> All right, don't judge my rapping when the earth is crapping us out of its earthly butthole. We've been here a while and now we're on the dole. It's, it's a catch as catch can relationship with Mother Gaia and you gotta honor it. She's got them polar ice caps and they're chilly but they keep us warm in ironic ways. You gotta go to school to understand it. Yo, put your pants on. Put your motherfucking pants on. Motherfucker, get your shorts off your pants on Gonna take the club down the street and keep the dance on 
Doesn't matter if they're big, doesn't matter if they're small, doesn't matter if they're tight or if they fit at all. Doesn't matter if they're gray, if they're black. But not wearing pants right now is a little whack. Be <laughs> squared, everybody. Thank you so much, Allie. Yeah, well, how do we, uh, uh, to uh, reward you for uh, donating your, your, your time, uh, you, you were delightful, like what, so, uh, plug, plug away, like how can people find you and, what, what, and, and get into you? Uh, my name is B Squid. You can find me online at bsquidmusic.com. All my social and stuff, they're there. Um, and I represent Keep the Feel Entertainment. That's my label. Uh, we're independent. We're out of Los Angeles. So we're producing music. That song that I performed is going to be on our new sampler, which is coming up. I the think, first version. The, <laughs> Not the. I don't I mean, want them to get confused. Like, can we put this bonus track on that? I mean, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, we'll do like a, a, a novelty vinyl number. Be great. That'd be really, really special and sampled for eons to come. All right, cool, and you'll come back one day, hopefully, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe you and Mike Eagle and Logic at the same time will have a will have a rap a palooza. Oh yeah, I love it. Or maybe I won't group you all together. Maybe I don't see the world through that lens where you're either a rapper or not. I mean, rap parties are fun though. Yeah. Like, maybe we're all rappers. Maybe I'll just pick them all up in my bus and bring them over, and we'll be rapping the whole way here and the whole way back, and, uh, it'll be and we'll leave in that bus. Can we outfit your bus for Armageddon? Okay. okay. All it's right, already cool. ready. We're good for that. Well, you, call, you know, you call it. You call it Armageddon. Arma Armageddon. Armageddon. The That's Armageddon the tour. We can't talk about that yet. The deal's not fully closed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, thank, thank B you. B Squid. Squid, everybody. Uh, thank you, B-Squid. Thank you very much. Thank you, Squid. Well, that was delightful. I like it when we make new friends randomly. Yeah. You should go to the desert more often for your little uh, vision quest. I do want you because I got a lot of writing done out there. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy adapting Vonnegut, you know? I, I strained one of my pinkies. Whoa. Hit, hitting too many commas or what? Like on the, on the keyboard or what? Yeah. It was just like, oh, man. He's, he's, he's comma heavy. You're gonna, you're your pinky, you, you could sprain a pinky. He loves doing commas. That. I was just like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Lord well, knows how many semicolons you're, you're using. Let's. Uh, should we get Levy up here? We should always get a Levy up here. Oh, Steve shit. Levy, join us. Where my Levy's at? Where my Levy's at? You're gonna love it at Levy. What's up, Levy? Hi. I, I forgot to use this. What's what? Uh, oh shit. <laughs> now you were two in the zone, man. You were you were you were you were doing some of your best work. I found in winters <laughs> and 700 oh, oh shit yeah I can't take it go give me a bag of cheese it's it's just got an endoscopy I'm trying to leave it let me call an uber let me don't take your limo you're trying to make this shit like a fuck <laughs> so I think I think that's like you know you know, patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. You got, you got to, you got to just, you, you know, go with the flow. I know. You it's hard go, to do both. Oh, go with the flow. Try to take a limo, go with the flow. No, I got a show to do. Focus on the O part of limo. Don't try to rhyme limo. Chimo. <laughs> That's how I got hung up. Just say, leave in a limo. Hey. I got a show to go to. <laughs> to go to. To go to. Yeah. A show to go to. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you had it going. Are you, is he, you, you let me know. You just give me this. Yeah. You, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you think about that? Yeah. I kidnapped your cat. Charging a ransom until you give me some... Bob Greenblatt, chairman of NBC. Why you gotta cancel me? Oh. oh, shots fired on the TV industry. To the T, to the V, to the what you gonna do with me? Silicon Valley is taking over, so you can drink my pee, cause I can produce this shit. 
I ain't gonna take it no more I'm gonna fuck your mama in the front door Go out the back door and floss her body I fucked your mama so hard She's now a hottie <laughs> She's now a hottie? Yeah, it didn't, you make, it, it didn't you, make sense And had like you, weird you connotations Of like you hottiness? need to fuck a woman to make her hot I didn't like it I backed off Cause I'm woke I backed off Backed off that shit Cause I'm woke, like a bicycle spoke I woke up with a baseball card Put into my spokes and it made a noise that's hard Brrr, like a motorcycle I'm gonna ride to your mama's house and fight with Michael, Uncle Michael <laughs> Yeah Here's the thing 9-11 was an inside job <laughs> Hear me out The melting point of steel is 457. And what happened to building seven? And the, what don't they want you to know? What they want you to think? If you Google it, you'll see in, in the sink. Al Qaeda, spelled backwards, is uh, Al Qaeda. Don't look it up. All right. Okay. What? A- what if that was someone's evidence that 9-11 was an interesting job, that Al-Qaeda spelled backwards as Al-Qaeda? Like, I, 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 that's neat, but I don't know if it proves anything. You know, it rhymes with 9-11. Tower 7. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, for future raps, just put that in your, in, your, in, your, in your rhyme bank. Remember right after 9-11, that email went out that was like, hey, listen you got to type in these are the flight numbers of the of the planes and then type this in and then change your font to wingdings and then it was like two buildings and two planes and then some oil so it's like like bl- bl- like black drops and i was like dude that's oil and then we were like wait a minute those are the flight numbers like why would they why would why would the 911 people be like no here's what we do <laughs> we got to wait until you, you know you know <laughs> You know, who, you know who we should get on the show? The 9-11 people. <laughs> Tragic. Tragically. I, I, but like, or like, the, well, there's, a, you know, the guy who was the inside guy at Microsoft who, like, manipulated the Wingdings font. Yeah. All right. Steve Levy? Yeah. How you doing? It's been an interesting week. Yeah? Break it down for us. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, she's so shocked. It's, it's been an interesting <laughs> week. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> my roommate's car was stolen out of my our garage. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like an inside job. It was. I, yeah. I think it was an inside job. What's the melting point of that car? <laughs> it was. It was a real bummer because th- my car was broken into, and they found my garage clicker and his spare key somewhere in my car. Wait, okay, wait, no, back us up through that. Because as you said, they didn't break in, that's how they got into the garage, is by breaking into your I think car? it was an inside job. I think that's somebody watched out. me. <laughs> they came, somebody watched me walk away from my car, forget to lock it, and then. Outside the. Oh, no, sorry. in the garage. Because I'm in an apartment building. Okay, so, oh, so, it, so when you say inside job, literally like someone that someone lives in the lives apartment. Someone who lives in, yeah. I so, think so, it was the Russians. But that's better than... I, I thought you were no, saying you parked but... on the street and that you'd have to feel guilty about that for the rest of your life. No, no, like, no. I parked on the street because I was just going to run in and then someone took my, my clicker, opened the garage, went in and had a field day. No. But no, you're an yeah. innocent too. You can't control when another human being that is allowed past all of the security measures is, is going to be a crazy uh, car yeah. thief. Shouldn't it be easy to investigate then? I mean, like, it's just one building of suspects. Right. Like, there are cameras. They called the, I don't know. I would also, I, and I'm suspecting, like, that's a good ten episodes of a Netflix original. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's called the, the, the Building. Dan, you have, enough, you have enough on your plate right now. Yeah. <laughs> You've already sprained one pinky. Ed Harris made one mistake. <laughs> I, it's just because I'm the only one who's lifted his head while beating Rodney King. Now I'm in charge of apartment building uh, car thievery. But one job was going to change everything. Whoa! This is a crazy job. I've got to kill the car. <laughs> Netflix presents a show with a trailer that follows the 
90s trailer trope. In a world. Oh, shit. Yo, 90s trailers. They got that voice and says, in a world where you stole a car, fucking okay. uh, drink a jar. All right, get, get back to the thing. I'm not that interesting. Talk. Uh, Dan and Spencer shot a fun Harmon Quest commercial this week. That was, right. a, that was, was a, a highlight. Real, real fun. Oh, yeah, Harmon Quest is coming to Verve. Next week. Verve. This week? This week. It's twice as expensive as CISO and twice as likely to stick around for a year. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't ask for this new world any more than you did. Like, try, try to look at it this way. Like, CISO was a Kickstarter. <laughs> and thank you for your $5 like, commitment to their experiment, which was noble and gave, like, Cameron and Rhea show and like 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 a bunch of a bunch a bunch of really cool shows on CISO and then it, it like I you know I don't think this is a controversial statement I don't think Universal gave it enough of a chance you can't that that business model needs five years but they had their own reasons they fucking folded it that's not your problem or but it's a little bit mine because like. <laughs> Now we have this world where it's like guys like me are like, I got a built-in audience, and I, am I going to keep coming to you and going, here's another person to subscribe to. I, I, I don't want to do that to you. That's not what Robin Hood does. He doesn't go, hey, merry men, uh, uh, I want to introduce you to Gerald of Nottingham. He's, uh, he's got a real fun business plan. For every bottle of shampoo you sell, uh, three people underneath you sell six bottles, and uh, that's, that's, that's not the Robin Hood myth we want. Are we finding out that Harmon Quest isn't good enough to make it to like an adult swim? Or like oh, yeah, for next? sure. I mean, it's kind of the fact that we're not already on one of those networks implies that we did not make it onto one of those networks. Right. Yeah, but now, I, I but there's... Our, our show is good enough to be on that, but compared to... I, I think there's an alternate reality where we did go to Adult Swim or something similar. But, you know... Sure. But, now, but now Adult Swim doesn't need us to because we're making it for free for two seasons. If that, that becomes so big and it's such a success, Adult Swim can come along, scoop it up, and, and, and they're, they're going to be like the heroes... But they didn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, and I don't even know the particulars of the deal. But the, the I mean, we didn't have, we didn't have. What among our options wasn't like we're gonna keep our show and like go because right, I mean, yeah, we, we, we would just we do it on the, the internet, rights. sell it for a dollar an episode. But we, that's not the business works like like we couldn't have produced that level of show uh, uh, if CISO didn't exist. Like they had the budget yeah. to give us to like do it like dinner for five fucking style and have an audience and the camera's going whooshy whoosh and, and Lizzie Olsen's on it and fucking it's, it's, it's a good show because it's a little higher production value than if we did it on our own but uh, the upside of that or the downside or the side side of that is like okay so CISO they're, they're folded they sold all their shit to Verve Verve is huge fans. They love the show. They're it's one like of my favorite bands too. Uh, right. So you know, and then I go to you guys and I go, "Hey, it's eleven ninety nine a month now." Like, what you guys are like, "How is this gonna? Ha how does this end? Am I just in a bunker with you, giving you fifty dollars a month for your pee?" That's why this season we're asking you not to watch Harmon Quest. <laughs> We're tired of it. We're not being complicit our, any longer. Look, our show, <laughs> let's just be honest. Our show is on dialysis and we need your money. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, I mean, for the I mean, first like, season. Yeah. I, but I also think they, well, yeah, they made the first season available. You can't, like, check out the second season, right? For free um, or anything. There might be, I, I would not be surprised if the first episode of the second season is free, but I'm not sure. That sounds right. It's a good episode, though. We got Gillian Jacobs, and oh boy, I don't well, want to say brought, she was, like, very Brita esque, fuck? but it was great. Why? I cleaned How out do you my... even have that much money? I, it's it's just these are singles, but what, is, what are you they, doing? I know these are this is half of the singles in my underwear did, drawer. Did you, did you just, did you oh, just, okay. Are you going to Jumbo's later? Or what's happening? <laughs> Why did you choose to take them out of your? Because I thought maybe something would come up. I don't know, was, and, and maybe it has. It's like, well, if anybody feels like, what a, you did you want to make it rain? Why don't you give everybody? Why don't you give everybody here one dollar? If you give everyone here one dollar, I think I might be. No, I probably couldn't. But I could. Uh, uh, try, try. The audience is desperate for dollars. Or you give someone all the money, but they have to answer three, three riddles. Oh shit! Why don't I just do? Why don't I just do what I do uh, for uh, trick or treat, which is I'll put a plate at oh, the no. foot of the stage with a sign that says "Just take one," and I'll put one of these dollars on it. 
and fucking sleep like a baby. <laughs> because then you see the empty plate and you're like, fuck society. This, this nice man left a bunch of money on a plate. <laughs> no one ever appreciates that. Did you really do that? What? Yeah, like, you can put it, this is a, this is a trick or treat trick. Look, if you didn't have time to go buy candy, put an empty bucket outside your door and put a sign that says, like, 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 high road the fucking kids and go, I, I, I go, like, be honest, just take one. And then, and then, and then the kid gets to, here's the thing, it's a victimless crime. The, the first kid, the first kid, if there's a kid that's like, goes trick or treating at 3.15 p.m., fuck that kid. He, but also he's like a red pillar like he, he knows he's like this fucking dude's pulling a scam like there's nobody here before me okay fine that kid goes off and goes a serial killer the, every kid after that every kid after that goes up to the bucket sees an empty bucket and a sign that says let's try to be nice people huh and an empty bucket and the kid goes like you know what I love that there's a guy here that thought society was worth a shit too bad it wasn't I'm gonna move on through my day go get some other candy victimless crime um, I got two things. Okay, so for the first one is, isn't it just fine to not have any candy and stuff? Like, is that some, like, will people shame you or anything like that? Is that something you well, have to worry about? Well, I have a lockable about? gate at the front of my estate now, so that's just not really an issue anymore. Well, I just mean, you know, you, there's I a lot I could just of... hit a button shaped like a bat and fucking turrets, like, point it. The kids, <laughs> you have ten seconds off. to expect less. Did you fear your trees getting TP'd? Right, yeah, like what's the, what's the downside of not, just not having candy? That's pretty standard, if right? If they're gonna TP my trees, first of all, they're only hurting my gardener. Uh, <laughs> second of all, and I'll put that on the note. Dan, what, what I like they about you is your that front door. The, the more success that you achieve, the more relatable you become. <laughs> trying to be relatable anymore, man. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to be honest, brother. You, you, you've become a man of the people. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I'm salt of the earth now. Uh, it's a, salt, a, 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 big, a, big, a, big, a big salt of the earth orbiting the earth on a military-grade platform uh, uh, hoarding the oxygen it steals. I thought you were saying... I thought you were saying that you, were, you, you, have, you put a bowl out with a $1 bill in it and said, please, just take one. And, like, like, and then some kids are like, oh, fuck. Somebody got all the money. Like, right, well, I am saying... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's an interesting twist. Is you have one piece of candy, you put it in the bucket, and it's the last one left. See how long it lasts. Yeah. But if you have that kind of time, buy a bag of candy. Right, it, it would this be hard to get one piece of candy. This is for a guy who didn't have time to candy. buy candy. Oh, oh, what I'm about, not... What I'm about not being cruel. I'm not, like, a weird monster. Well, yeah, but, but, but like, you, have a, you, have, like, you have, like, two, like, like full-size Snickers in there. It says, please just take one. <laughs> but you have a camera rig, like, the way they take a picture of you when you're going down Splash Mountain. And so the kid walks away with two Snickers, and he's got a picture of him. But he also gets to buy that picture if he wants. Look, I'll tell you what, man. It, once you get over 30, it's like the pressure gets out. Unless you live in a really specific neighborhood that's, like, designed for people to buy the house because it looks like a house where they can't wait to give out candy at trick-or-treat and designed for the parents to drop their kids off at that cul-de-sac. Like, 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 every other place in Los Angeles, it's like, it's, you start to, like... It becomes an exercise in, in, in the fucking like primatological like like anxiety. Like you open the door and there's like a 15 year old dude, like like w that that put like a, a, a fucking uh, ski cap on his head because that's his costume and he's like holding his shirt out, going "Give me candy," and you're like "Jesus Christ, don't kill me!" Like it's a big city, man. There's no, there's no charm to trick or treat. Like it's kind of like the purge now. I just kind of like. Ethan Hawk into my bedroom and watch through a camera. I say this Halloween, we just break into Steve's roommate's car and put all our candy in there. And the kids have to go in and like, kind of pretend to break into that car. Did I ever yeah. share the story of, of, of uh, when, the, when I was, I, I, me and my friend, my best friend Ramstack, we were uh, uh, like, we were like, Ramstack. I think we were like 11 or 12, and we were like, we were kind of doing that. We were like, we put some like dirt on our face, so we had hobo costumes. And uh, like, and we were like going and trick or treating, like free candy, like we're and, and then like here comes Jenny Vote, who like is like you know the the crush of my life in grade school, and she's like walking and she's got this like little girl with her, like maybe a little sister is dressed like an astronaut or a princess or something, and uh, 
and, uh, and, 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 and it's, oh, it's Jenny Vogt, and I got like soot on my face, and I'm, with, and I'm like, hey, what's, what's going on? And she's like, yeah, what are you, you trick-or-treating? I'm like, yeah, are you? And she's like, well, she is. Oh! She was like on fucking, like, you know, chaperoning, because she was a grown-up. Because she was my age, and I was like, wah, wah. that's like one of those big moments where, like, yeah. you know, the girls grow up fast, and then you're like, I'm a fucking, I'm yeah. the worst. I, I, I was a worse person at that at, at that age. We would go up at the top of the, the steep hill and take the pumpkins from people's front yards, and then spray them like with like aqua yeah. <laughs> spray paint and light them on fire and roll them downhill and it's classic it's pretty scary when you see a jack o' lantern coming at you on fire <laughs> but then the problem that you know the the, the 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 bad part of that is that at the end there's a house and a, a flaming <laughs> incendiary device is going into the juniper tree in their front yard and going to kill everybody. At the end of it is a whole society that's just like, <laughs> oh, so you kids just don't give a fuck. Like, I, I feel so bad about being a kid now. Like, we, we used to just, like, throw shit at cars. Like, we didn't get it. We thought we were the Goonies. <laughs> Do, did, did we talk about window tapping we, the, with the penny and the tape? Did we ever talk about this? Uh, wait, my, my penny tapping no, story? No, window tapping, penny tapping. We called it penny tapping. Yeah, you, you, did you tell me about this? Uh, yeah, I told like, you about yeah, penny tapping. Yeah, that's fucking... <laughs> That's some sinister shit. Yeah, but that's like the most benign thing of all. Yeah, but it's, that it's, is it's torture. It's, yeah. I know, but at least yeah. Well, you know what? Now that I think about it, but it's, 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 it's but it's but because the, you're 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 implying to a person that someone's tapping on their window. So, so it's like I, and now you look at it through a modern lens. You're like, that's a horrible thing to do to somebody. But we we were it was the '80s, so we thought. Well, they will think it's like Slender Man. I, 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 like, 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 I, I didn't. I, I said, no, I, 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 Slender I Man was invented in 2013. Shut the up, you fucking uncreative, shitty generation. <laughs> That's been our show. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> what, 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 what if a guy had long arms? You should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> you have an entire internet to create mythology. You are, you are bad kids. <laughs> All right. That's mine. Simon wanted us to to plug the uh, his Arming Kickstarter, class. the Crawling King. Uh, so I guess Starburns is uh, they're doing a project called the Crawling King. It's going to be a uh, hard written horror fantasy with almost 200 pages of incredibly insane art. Um, Are you available as a publicist? <laughs> I I can fill that role sometimes. I just like yeah, whatever you're selling, I'm buying. <laughs> All right. How you know, do you access it? Can I can I can I pitch something that that is happening here at the Starburns Castle? But it's something I actually believe in because I went last Wednesday. And is it's it a vitamin amazing. B it's shot be, for leaving? Is it church three more weekends? How many more weekends is Eddie here? Three. Eddie Pepitone is one of my favorite comics of all time. Woo! Was anybody here on Wednesday? It was absolutely wonderful. He's a crazy genius, wonderful. He just, like, it's partly material, partly just rift, and you, you just watch a, a really, really funny guy lose his fucking mind in front of your eyes, and it was magical. So I, I'm sad that I'm going to be out of town for the next two uh, uh, Wednesdays, but uh, if, you're, if you're free, come here on Wednesdays to see Eddie Pepitone. Uh, look it up at starburnsindustries.com, right, Church? Is that, is that, is that, is that? Starburnscastle.com. It's really good stuff, and he's a, he's a monster. And you, if you don't already know him, you must, because he's like he's doing comedy the way like like stand ups ought to aspire to. I think I love him. Pepitone is the best tone. Whoa. No, no takers. Pepitone. Pepitone is the best tone. Yeah, you know, I tried. It's better than him. Did you hear that? Uh, Simon wants you to know. I guess it's a horror series. I guess there's series. a thing someone wants a... you to do. <laughs> what? Yeah. How, well, how do we... In... I guess they took a dog's blood and extracted <laughs> the oxygen from it. and It's a new sports drink that makes you sad. It's called Doggone Energy. <laughs> you, you sound like an experiment. Your heart is broken. You had a heartbreak. I did, yeah. Wait, recently? <laughs> Yeah, this is last week. 
But you, op- you opened with a car breaking, but you actually had a real break. Because he's like one of these boy scouts. He doesn't want to talk about, like, he doesn't, he's not like me. He's like, get up on stage and go, yeah, a girl broke my heart. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> like, when you say broke your heart, that like business model. Model. Are you, I mean, broken hearted? Were you? Like... Uh, I mean, look, I'm, I'm numb these days. It was pretty. I mean, it's like two and a half months ago, that one was like I wasn't eating, I couldn't sleep. But, but this one, I was but just like, but I'm ad, tired. Your, your ad reads last that time are amazing. Now we can tell that you're hurting inside. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm, so I'm, I'm making light of it. Like, what? What? Can we? Can we talk about it at all? If you want, I'd love to. Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> like, like, were you in love? In love? Or falling in love? Or infatuated? Wh- which one? I, you, I mean, that's that's the question. Uh, <laughs> that's what multiple choice questions are all about. The, the I no, the, the, this 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 one we, I don't know. We've loved each other for a long time, and we're trying to make it work. And it, it you know, it's. It was, she was like the, the the girl I've been chasing my whole life, kind of a thing. It was like sixteen years in the making. I don't think we gave it much of a chance <laughs> this time. This time around, like you know, you know, whatever. You, you, wait, wait, I, I, I'm not. I, that was a joke, right? Are you? No, no, no. I mean, like, I, I thought it was. Uh, it wasn't. That's not, like it's a joke that a writer would write. That's a joke. The, like, no, I know. He's saying of you. This I time you around, this yeah. time around, they didn't give it a chance. Oh, okay. Well, okay. yeah. No, we, we, we it's like. I, it was always like unrequited, but we, our friendship like just got stronger and stronger until we were able to finally cross a threshold. And then this summer it was like, let's try, let's actually try to have a, a relationship. Well, you know what, Steve? Let's bring her out. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands together. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> it's a um, show called "This Isn't Your Wife." What? It's hilarious. It's hilarious. I stand by it. I stand by it. You laughed through your own groans. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's nice. You're 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 a good guy. That's definitely like like in my in my day, like yeah. that would that's that just goes right into the misogyny engine because the way to recover from that, like, sure is like you get bit by a snake, you rub it in dirt or whatever, like you do. Like, and that's a bad example. I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know anything about what? primal medicine. I, I, can, can, can we put a pin in that thought? All right, it's like, you know how like, you, you burn your thumb and then you shove it in your mouth? So, and it's like, probably that's not helping as much as some other counterintuitive thing. Like, you're supposed to pee on it or let a bee lick it. I don't know. But, like, you, you millennials, Jesus. you're a millennial, right? You're 40? Yeah. Uh, the, 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 like you kids, like you're very like you 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 don't go to that place. Like I've met this young lady, like like she's cool, you're cool, like like and so that it's it's like you have a harder thing to deal with because you don't get to go to the places that I got to go to when I was an adolescent, you, uh, or or even in my 30s. I was still like fucking okay. Well, that's easy. Bitches is crazy, you know. Like 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 oh, fuck it. I'll leave a shitty comment on her blog and you know like 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 like, like fuck all women and it's women against men and. All stuff like you kids are you kids by kids I mean 35 year olds you're, you're, you're growing. I'm not 35 you're gonna you, I, I, I want to say good for you you're, you're being a mensch and a gentleman and I know that hurts more you're having to deal with more pain you're having to manage more pain on your own it's that's like very applaudable you should know people appreciate that it's like like, like you're not going to a dark place and that that's harder to do that's fucking cool of you Thank, thanks, Dan. Uh, I and, appreciate uh, that. And, 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 and you'll, like, like, she'll be fine and you'll be fine. And, like, it's, it's, like, it's like Tabasco. It burns your tongue. It's not real pain. It's, like, fucking totally okay to say this fucking burns. And totally the only thing you don't want to do is go, oh, my tongue's on fire. I should, I should cut it off, you know? Like, it's just like, oh, it fucking burns. And, like, you feel the, feel the, feel the burn. <laughs> Uh, 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 but 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 yeah, I, 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 I'm in your corner. I, I know you are. You've been uh, an incredible advocate. Of, of <laughs> you have. <laughs> you, 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 here, here's how here's how much of a mensch and a sweetheart you are. Is that when you said it's been a crazy week, you, you, that was the more painful thing. But you but you chose to speak about that if something bad happened to your friend. 
right. that his car got broken into. That's like you're you're such a sweet guy. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't let that eat you up. You know, like don't you know, like it's like like you're at one end of the spectrum. I'm the other end where I'm like my shoe hurts. Fuck America. Wipe my ass on everyone. <laughs> Until I get tired and I'm out of shit from my ass and everyone's like, there's shit all over me. I'm like, good night. <laughs> That's one way of handling things. And then there's like this other thing where it's like, don't get, you know, like somewhere in the middle is like a rhythm. Will you get, go see my therapist? I told you I'd pay for it. <laughs> yeah. She's worried about you just based on her conversations <laughs> where you, you arranged to pay for my yeah. therapy. Yeah, yeah. She's like, how's Steve leaving? You offered <laughs> after the last one, yeah. <laughs> I can tell when, he, when I invoice him that he's ready to pop. Well, you know, sometimes, guys, the best therapy is to uh, live out a life of fantasy. Why don't we play a little <laughs> bit of D&D? &D? Oh, yeah. Last time, what happened? <laughs> all right, who dumped you? What? People dump me all the time and I don't bring it up, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, it's a oh, joke. Shit. You find yourself on a high road. <laughs> <laughs> it's treacherous goings. <laughs> No, what happened? Uh, uh, we, we, we fought some bandits. We left with the uh, with Patchins. Right, leaving the church with Patchins. Banditos attacked, and they got him. The end. I'm still unconscious, do we, right? Did do, do we, do we lose Patchins? Patchins is gone? Uh, that's a great question to ask in character. Uh, well, we, we know that, that, the, uh, that the prior boned out. He decamped. He, he left us because he wanted yeah, to get Yeah, so out. you're at the campground. One of, one, of the guys, one of the guys Dan touched with his uh, inflict wounds, and he kind of with, withered. Yeah. That guy's kind of hobbling away. And then there's another guy who you clubbed, his, you clubbed him in the head, and he kind of just went down cold. The rest of the banditos have kind of escaped at this point, and uh, they, they made off Patchen's with Patchen's clothes. They took Patchen's clothes, but I took some clothes off another dead guy and put them on right. Patchen's. I go up to Patchen's. Patchen's, can you hear me? How are you? Uh, 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 oh, my God. Uh, I'm stabbed. Patchen, is your character so important to our story that I should heal you? <laughs> These are the Why should you of... have to ask that? Like He's Patchens. I'll answer that. Okay. Well, These are viewer. the moral Look, questions I'm, I'm you've got to decide. <laughs> I, I... I'm a little PTSD'd from fighting these from those banditos. That's in re if it were real life and you. Where are my so clothes? Some you, other guy took him, but you're wearing a bandito's outfit Jesus right now. Christ. Oh, my God. He starts sobbing inconsolably. He's like, he's thrashing around and like clawing at the soil. I'm going to fix this. Can I, 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 I want to follow the hobbling uh, bandito. Okay. He's, he's slower, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go grab him. All right. You're just grabbing him? Well, if I can. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I, I may. Yeah. No, I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways to approach the guy, but yeah, that works. Okay, so I'm sorry. You rolled a two. You do not grab him. Um, yeah, no, you definitely don't grab him, but he's still just hobbling away, so you can essentially try and catch yeah. him. I, I, walk, I walk up to Passions, and I cure light wounds. Okay, uh, light wounds. That's 1d8. All right, he something. heals eight damage. Uh, he's, he's, uh, most of his wounds are starting to scab over, but he's not like completely healed, and he's still just, you know, I don't know, it, insane almost. Um, you want to grab him again? Do you want to do something? I think I'm unconscious. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. oh, Steve, you're dreaming. You're dreaming about that same door that Rob Schraub's version of you was dreaming about. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, Carlos, we, we, got a, we got bigger fish to fry here. Our friend uh, Diarrhea Jr. here, he's got a, a, a demon mist inside him. We got to help this guy. I don't have time to explain, but a lot of, uh, of uh, medicine has to do with state of mind, and uh, he needs to confront his uh, tormentor. Who does? Huh? Who, who, who has to confront who? Patchens. I can't, I'll be right there. Okay. I just, I rolled a two. Oh, I just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, I'd be back already. Okay, I got you. All right. we, yeah, we, we, you, you grab him this time. All right. Can I drag him over? All right. He is still armed, so. He, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't stab you, but he, he's, 
if you don't like really restrain him, like you're you're like grappling with him, you know. But if you don't really restrain him, he might I keep him, stabbing you. I pull you. him by the hair, uh -huh. and I and I and I I you know I say in a in a very convicted voice because the truth is my character in these moments is convicted about these kinds of things. Okay. I say, if you one more time make the wrong decision about about uh, who you're trying to harm, I I, I will kill you and that will be the beginning of your misery. Okay. Um, I'm an expert on these things. There is a silver flame that guides us and it, it will make an example of you. Um, do you have uh, uh, do you have intimidate or diplomacy? But isn't it isn't it more intimidating if I don't have those things? I'm like <laughs> you know? Like how many times are we the victims of a charming bully? They usually have like bad grammar and okay, let me look. Sorry, there's a this whole stack of papers and I, <laughs> I, uh, uh, the missus and I uh, were uh, recently and. Uh, um, uh, Other side. Uh, okay. There you go. <laughs> Very well. Uh, uh, looking for uh, intimidate and diplomacy. Intimidate. Uh, no, that's a zero. And uh, diplomacy. Oh. There's a check mark. Okay, great. Um, but no numbers, right? You do have it. It's okay. just not measurable. Well, yeah. Same could be true of all of us. You definitely scare him. He's like, Jesus, oh boy. That's yeah. a bad... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're at a fork in your life. You were a bandito. Now you're a hostage. Mm. Your behavior as a hostage could lead you to the main road of humanity. Something you departed when you became a bandito. Probably your dad's fault. Okay. I'm your new dad. I'm taking you back. What's you don't have to be a hostage forever. You could die a hostage, or you could spend a time as a hostage proving that you're a human. All right. What's your perception? It, it's not checked, and then there's a... Th it says total bonus, and there's a three in parentheses. Perfect. I'm that perceptive. All right. Okay, so now, obviously, come on. Huh? You just asked me what my perception was, and now you're saying nothing. Right. Well, so how is that? I'm not. What is this? What, uh, I'm paranoid now. Huh? What didn't I perceive? Yeah, what didn't you perceive? I, I pull his hair. I go, what am I not perceiving here? What, what are you talking about? What are you doing? I look at his hand. He swallows hard. Oh, you I, I, shitty I, person. I walk over. I, I have 11 perception. Let me try. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, Carlos, what are we trying to perceive? He here? swallowed something. Open up. Drop it. Drop right. it. He opens his mouth. I reach in and pull his jaw open. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I we pull it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop what? Spit it out. He doesn't have anything in his mouth. He just swallowed nervously, I think. He wasn't swallowing the microfilm. Alternately... If you swallow something, it no longer remains in your mouth. I, 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 I punch him in the stomach. All right. I'm trying to... I, 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 I have induced vomit. Give him the Heimlich. Like, get, get, like, 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 hold him upside down. Go old school on this guy. All right. Well, you punch him in the stomach, but it doesn't make him throw up. He just takes a couple damage. He swallowed some... All right, well, it doesn't, you know what? It doesn't matter. I, I only brought him over here for one thing. It's not like we're on an adventure where we need to know where the treasure is. I, I, I just like, hey, Patchens, Patchens, look over here, look. I just want to watch, have Patchens watch him die. That's, that's oh. all. <laughs> um, Patchens isn't, isn't really, he's still, he's just face down in the dirt, kind of like just flopping Someone and flailing. Someone lift Patchens' head, I, I, make I, him I look, pick, I, and watch I, I this pick, guy die. I pick up the bandito by the feet and shake him and try to get whatever was he swallowed. I okay, then I grab Patchens' head and point it so that he's watching the guy die. <laughs> okay. And I whisper in his ear, like, it's okay. Like, like the people that hurt you get hurt more. In what's, wait, okay, are you going to kill him, though? Patchens? No, no, the guy. No, the guy's going to die, obviously. I, 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 He's I, going I, to die. I, I want to shake him upside down and make him cough up whatever he had. How is he going? Uh, okay, well, that doesn't work. Okay. I invent the Heimlich maneuver and give him the Heimlich maneuver. All right. Well, yeah. Um. <laughs> I, I, I see it. Yeah. I don't even know. How do you critically fail a, yeah. a, a non-Heimlich? Yeah. <laughs> You, I, I, is it a good I, I, Heimlich? Or? I, so, I smash his sternum in. Well, yeah, you can hear ra ribs cracking as you give him the Heimlich maneuver. And after way too many attempts, he finally starts to 
choke something up, and it oh. gets lodged in his throat and I, it dies. Patchens, Patchens, watch. See, Patchens? See? See the will of the eternal flame? Patchens is like still for a moment, and then he just starts like thrashing in overdrive. It's like okay. I, I this is what happened. I reach in and grab the thing that I, that I kind of perceive with my 11 perception that he choked up. He choked on it. Looks like a big weird pill. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I examine the pill. It looks big and weird and a little bit dissolved, but only a little tiny bit. Oh, so he, he was trying to take his own life? He was trying to, like, Herman Goering his way out of... It's not his... standard bandito protocol. Yeah, what, why, yeah what, what do these guys have to hide that they want to take their own lives? Perhaps these banditos... <laughs> no more than we know. <laughs> Should we search him? Uh, you can, sure. Patchens, you okay? He's, he's just screaming. He's saying, I can't believe it's God. Oh, my God. I have one job. Oh, my God. What is it, Oh, Patchens? my God. What is he's it? like, he's, he's clutching at you. You know, like when someone's like hysterical with, with, with pain and agony, you don't know what they're doing. Like he's doing that and he's like just kind of slapping you like right. he's, I don't know. And uh, you can, at, at some point, you figure out what he's doing is he's trying to grab, like, a knife out of your wallet and stuff. Like, he's trying to grab a knife from you. Patchens, why do you want my knife? He, um, he doesn't grab it. He just grabs at it. And he's just like, I can't, I can't handle this. Patchens, you got to tell me what, what you lost. Uh, I, uh, I had, they gave me, I, I was sent to Rhone for one reason, just to keep, this thing's safe. It's like a, I don't know what it is. It's like a treasure, sacred treasure. I don't know. I don't know. They what does it look me, like? It's like a, like the, it's like a big, big gem, like the most beautiful jewel you've ever seen. Oh, and man. all I was supposed to do was just lay low and, you know, hide. And I figured after there was all those boogans, I should probably relocate, but fuck. Wait, did, did one of the banditos just take that jewel that you had on you? Uh, well, my clothes is gone, and I'm stabbed up. We gotta get those banditos. I thought this was why just a... Patchens, why didn't you tell us you had precious jewel treasures on you before the boogans came up? Because I'm not supposed to tell anybody. That's well, part of the whole thing. If I, You could steal it. You could be, you know, agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> I, I grab the bandito that's, that's, that's there. That just Was he dead? Uh, that one that was... The choking one? Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. Are there any live, live banditos with him? There's this? one that's of indeterminate status. He's, he's, he's got a caved-in helmet. Um, I search him to see if he's got the, the gem. No, the, the other guys ran off with the gem. Right. I mean, for sure. Yeah. So we fucked I up. Search, I search that guy anyway. Yeah. Okay. You search him. You find... Uh, what do you find? You find under his regular bandito clothes, he has very finely crafted studded leather armor. It's very quiet and stealthy. It seems like it was meant to be hidden underneath normal clothes. What's, what size is he? Uh, he's a human. He's a human. Yeah. A little big for me. Yeah. Shit. And then you also see a dagger. He's got a dagger and a short sword, and they both seem of incredibly fine make, like uh, like masterwork weapons. You don't even know who made them, but it was a real, real master. Well, I'm, I'm small. I take that dagger and I uh, give this. Uh, who wants this awesome sword? You guys are sword peoples. I don't. I don't use blades. I'm, I'm gonna. I want to check the dead guy. I want to see if that's the same thing. Are these guys all like this? Um, yeah, you search him too, and you get the same thing. So I didn't quite finish, so I'll just... So there's also a poison pill in the one who didn't take a poison pill's pocket, and then one of them has a little note, but it's, it's like with like script and symbols and runes and stuff. It's, it doesn't seem like any written language. It seems like a code of some Except sort. Except to someone with knowledge arcana. It's clearly not magical. It's uh, it's just a, it's just a normal code. It knowledge seems... history. Do you? Have, how many points do you have in knowledge history? It's a check mark, but but no points. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You recognize it is it, it, it seems to use a basic uh, a basic standard of symbology used in uh, the guilds for trading purposes. So it's mm. like a symbolog uh, symbolic language that's not exactly like for speaking. It's not like the you know it's not common or anything. It's just like its own language. Uh, but 
that's the only thing. You only recognize the symbols. Like, you don't actually know what they mean, and you couldn't read it if you wanted. Right. Knowledge, so. nobility. <laughs> All right. Nobility occasionally learns that symbol language. Knowledge, religion. <laughs> Some religions disagree with that symbol language. Linguistics. I, I don't think you have knowledge linguistics. I do. Check mark. Linguistics. Do you have any points in it? No, I don't have points in any of this shit. Uh, fucking second, third level. Fucking. Like, look, it's. I know this this language. It's a trading language. These people aren't banditos. They're stockbrokers. I, I take that dagger, I take, is it, the, the symbol's written on a note? Uh, yeah. Okay, I take that note, and then I take the poison pill, and I put it, in his, oh. I put it in his mouth. What? Oh. And then I say, where are your friends staying, and I won't make you swallow this pill. Who are you saying that to? To, to the guy, to the bandito. <laughs> Which one? The one that's not dead. They're both dead. They're both dead. Yeah. I take his dagger and just stab him eight times. <laughs> Oh man, it's no good. I'm just just testing out the strength of the dagger. It's it slides through easily. All right, as if it's uh, magically sharp. These guys weren't regular banditos, and they've got they've got uh, Patchen's precious gem. Yeah, but we've also got a sick diarrhea on our hands. <laughs> he's dying over here. He's got that mist. I think the mist went into that keyhole in his heart, and he's infected with some sort of horrible demonic business. Yeah, we got we, we, we got to get him to the church. We got to get him to the church. But no, we gotta get Patchen's gem back. But what if, at, at the expense of killing DJ? What? what if, sorry, we should go to DJ's dream probably. Is that okay? Yeah. There's a door. <laughs> There's sounds behind it. You don't know what they are. Can I open the door? Do you want to? You don't know until you try. Okay, I, I, I put my ear against the door to listen. What is it? What, give me some of those sounds. As you're putting your ear to the door, like there's just a big smash on the door, like someone's beating against it. It really spooks you out, and then it's followed by like. Do I have my weapons? Uh, no, you're naked. I'm naked. Yeah, it's a dream. <laughs> Ride or die, I guess. Open the door. All right. <laughs> As you touch the door, it, it opens, or the, the door kind of disappears, and just behind it is blackness, and the blackness kind of spreads up your body, and you become consumed by the darkness, and you wake up in a cold sweat. Like, I'm, I'm actually awake now? Yeah, yeah, you're awake, awake. Holy shit! What the fuck? You've been stabbed multiple times. What? No. I've been... <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You, got, you got your ass kicked for a while. Yeah, you, what not... the fuck are you guys doing? I'm bleeding out. No, well, what, what are we doing? Not pulling you out? No, I'm bleeding out. I was oh, stabbed multiple well, times. What, where am I? What is happening? How many, how many HP? What was that door? How many HP does, does uh, DJ have right now? Um, great question. What's your maximum HP? 24. 18. All right, he's fine. You're not bleeding out. <laughs> I'm in pain. Yeah, well, look, we're all in pain. It's been, it's been a long yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Life is pain. My pain. wounds hurt. My heart hurts. Like, my... <laughs> we're going to heal your heart, DJ. We're going to find the key that opens up that weird hole in your heart. And we're going to open it up and we're going to get that back. I had this dream that you guys were abusing two young girls. It's terrible. That was, that was Carlos. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> what is happening? Well, it's good to be back. <laughs> um, I, we gotta get him to the church. I don't think we do. You feel okay, right, buddy? Uh, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. All right, then let's 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 run off after these banditos and get Patchen's gem back. Is pa is Patchen able to walk and like move about? Uh, no, he's still pretty wounded. He's gonna need some more healing. Uh, I uh, would would stabilize help or no? He's not dying anymore. Okay. He, I think, before. Jeff healed him. It would have helped. So but. I could cash in. Did I? I didn't use summer Monst summer monster two yet, right? I, I think you did. Yeah, to summon an ant. Oh, the ant's still here. Do you want to do anything with the ant? I give him one of these. <laughs> uh, good, good job, Fendrick. 
<laughs> um, can I cast virtue on him, or is virtue only for myself? Uh, you can cast off. Okay, I, I, virtue to give you one health point back. He's loving it. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I have. I'm, I'm trying. I, what? What do you remember? What loadout I used? Uh, I think it was offensive. You yeah. offense, and, I, and I, so I, I'm just I, so I haven't used divine favor yet. Is that a, it's, is it's, that a, it's two after ten? We got to We got to Oh, two after ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's better than ten after two. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> ask me if I got a haircut. Uh, Dan, did you get a haircut? All of them. Ooh. Dad, dad, dad jokes. I want to have children. Cliffhanger. Let's hear it for Steve Levy, everybody. Let's give it up for our guest, B Squid. Hell yeah. Zach McKeever, Church, Sarah Hill, Kevin Day, Chris Barb, everybody, Matt, your bartender, everybody we love here. Thank you all so much for coming. I've been your comptroller, Jeff Davis, your mayor, Dan Harmon. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.